Hello superstars out there. I'm back again. I was going to give a little message about God's calling on your life. And you can see my lovely wife. She bought me Donatello the Tooting Turtle at Walmart in Carthage. Welcome to my life. We think it's funny anyway. Layla loves it. She likes eating it. But anyways, I was going to talk to y'all about God's calling on your life because me and Lindsay was in the car the other day and we was talking about the story about the talents or the coin, the coin that the ruler left. And Jesus was telling in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. He's talking then Luke is telling it again in Luke 19, verses 11 through 27. <clears throat> What's up? She got some new shoes, orange dolphin colors. Shout out, so happy early Mother's Day to Lindsay. And I'll be wearing them too because we wear the same size shoes. That's awesome. Double my shoe wardrobe. So in the story, it talks about how this king gave the silver coins to three different people. You know, gave five to one, and he gave two to one, and he gave one to one. You know, so in the first one, the five, he goes out, he invests his talent in silver coins. He invests it. He doubles it. So when the king gets back, he's like, "Look, this is what I've done with the money. I've doubled it. I've done all this. I used it. I used what you gave me, and I multiplied it." And the king was happy. He was like, "Great job. That's great. I'm going to give you. I'm going to keep those five. And I'm going to give you the five that you earn." So he basically went from nothing to ten silver coins, just like that, or ten pounds of silver coin. And the one that done two done the same thing. He doubled his. So not only now did he not have any, but he had two plus two, so he had four. And one person that had the one talent or one silver coin, he's like, look, I knew you was a hard guy. I knew you was, you know, very merciless ruler and all that. You stole from people to give what wasn't yours. So the king was very mad. He's like, look, if you knew I'd done that stuff, why didn't you at least invest it? Give it to a bank. That way I'd have got some interest on it. And I feel like that's what God's calling to us, you know, use what we've got, whether it's one, two, or three. It doesn't matter. You know, he's not, he's not the, rule, the mean ruler or nothing like that. You can get to heaven without using your talents, but it'd be so much better when you get to heaven. You see people that, because you used what God gave you, that they they made it there because of what you did, right? And that's one of the main reasons I'm stepping out now is because I feel like God's called me to a different level. And I'll be honest, if I said it was easy and it was, it was a breeze, I'd be lying because it's been a struggle. And can you attest, Lindsay? Yes. She can attest. And it's like, the more you trust God, the harder things seem to get. But I know there's there's going to be a time, a breakthrough, a time of just knowing what my purpose is exactly. Until then, I'm going to keep doing what I feel God's called me to do. I'm going to keep seeking Him. I'm going to keep talking about Him. I'm going to keep witnessing for Him. So you're calling, you know. Basically, you got to use what God's given you. So like I said, you know, I'm stepping out right now. For that very reason, you know, I, I left the corporate world. I left a basically nine to five job. It's pretty much like seven to five some days. It was long hours, and I was having no family time, no really no time with my family, no time to do extra activity outside of outside of work. So I left that. I had no backup plan. I do have a small side gig, which I'm not going to talk about right now so another thing you got to do besides using what God's given you is you can't compare yourself with others I mean I could sit on here I could go to Facebook I could look at all these other people that I even that I grew up with that are so much more successful at just sharing God's word at using their calling for him like I got a good friend of mine who left Mississippi went to Texas and he's a praise and worship leader at a church out there he travels all over doing doing ministry like that I'm like, come on, God, I, I've taken piano lessons, I've taken guitar lessons. It's like I've been frustrated, I've gotten frustrated at God, like, how come my talent in this isn't good? I've taken the lessons, I know a lot of the chords, but I can't play them, I can't put them together. This is where life comes in, and I said I wasn't coming on here because I look ridiculous, but, so, I feel to just, I'm tired of him, I feel to comment on this, because Joey's kind of making the point clear that sort of being confused about your calling but at the same because I have felt that way too but at the same time God has showed us our calling 
Yeah. And part of the reason we've been confused is because what you're saying, we've been too busy looking at what other people are doing. And the enemy will always use that to make you feel less than and not enough. But what God's calling us to do it looks different than what them over there are doing. And, like, ministry does not always look the same. Your calling is not going to look like everyone else's. So yeah. us being called to YouTube and you sharing the Word of God, how you're sharing it right now, is all part of God's beautiful, specific plan for our life and our family and how He made us. Like, God is so specific in the details. So... I think the devil wants us so bad to say, like, why am I not doing what they're doing? Or what I'm doing isn't enough because we're not in some other country doing mission work. That was my, I thought, I thought like the ultimate calling was like, if you're really serving God, like you had to be in another country on the mission field in that way. And I think I couldn't even see what God had put in me, where he put me to do what he called me to do because I didn't even think that that was like worthy of being called like serving God or mission work or sharing yeah. the gospel. Like some people like joke off on YouTube, like that's stupid. Like when are they going to get serious about their yeah. faith? It's like, this is, a, it's a huge place to be able to share the word of God. Mm-hmm. And not to say that that's the only thing that we're doing. It's not like we just share the word of God on YouTube and you know, like that's it. You know, when yeah. we go to the grocery store, we go anywhere else in life, we're just, awful mean people i mean sometimes they're probably in when i go to walmart but (laughs) you know what i'm saying uh but i just wanted to come say that because when i heard you talking it's like basically i was was building up to my next point if you notice right there it says one of the main things you got to do when you're calling is you know don't compare don't compare with others like when i lived in texas and oklahoma i was going to a church called life church i hope most of y'all have heard of it if you haven't Look it up on YouTube, Facebook, Google, whatever. Pastor Craig Rochelle is an amazing pastor. He's amazing teachers, preachers, leader. Like, I would catch myself just watching him on stage and be like, God, why can't I be like that? He's got it figured out. You know, I took a bunch of his leadership classes and all that. I listened to his podcast and all. And I kept comparing myself and I was like, I'm not called to be Pastor Craig. I'm called to be Joey. We're called to be Lulu and Jojo. We're called to do what we're called to do. Right. And you know, it says, you know, don't despise small don't despise small beginnings. Like, I refer back to Life Church again because I went there. I know Pastor Craig started Life Church in a two car garage with just seven people on his first week of opening. And now they're one of the largest church in the world because they got all the campus churches and they're online. And then, like, his testimony before is it was it's funny to hear him speak because he just finished seminary and he got a uh, a position where he was leading couples group. There's about a hundred couples or so that he was leading. You know, basically growing them, leading them in the word and all that. He said he was able to grow that hundred hundred meeting down to four people. <laughs> and when, when he speaks about it, it's funny. I wish I could remember which message it was given on, but that was back in 2014, so it's a little beyond my memory right now. I just remember him telling the story. He said it was him, Amy, which is his wife now. I don't know if it's his wife or his girlfriend then. And then it was a, another leader in the church and his wife. It was just them four. So basically, nobody started. Nobody was coming there. And then he started his church. So another thing that I would like to mention on is don't think that you're not important. Your call is not important because you are. Comparison is going to kill your faith. It's going to kill everything you do. Like if I kept trying to be Pastor Craig, I would just be a miserable person because I can't do what he's called to do. I probably don't even want to do what he's called. Oh, can I come in and make a good point? Okay, another another comment from the beautiful one. So, uh, I think sometimes we look over the fence at what everyone else is doing, and we just see, like, Stephen Ferris as the highlight reel. We only Mm -hmm. see, like, the mountaintops, but we don't see the behind the scenes and the valleys and everything else that goes into it. And I'll tell you that social media is a great place to be fooled, um... 
into like a fake life like why does everyone else's life look so easy and mine look so hard well because that's all you're seeing on social media mm-hmm. um that's not the reality nobody posted the fights you had in church on the no in the car on the way to church no <laughs> and thankfully at least some of us can come on here and even be honest about any real part of life that's not sparkly and shiny because I mean I know that I've tried to fake it till I've made it before mm-hmm. and we can't learn from each other that way because we're all human right. the human part of us exists in every single one of us so any of us that are trying to pretend like that's we're not true. like it's just silly but uh you said something else too about calling uh not wanting to do what someone else does like we don't know what all goes in to something like if you were in the shoes of a pastor I bet it's a lot harder than a lot of us think when we say man I wish I was a pastor because they get to be up on stage and they get to talk in the mic and everyone knows who they are like that mentality or I wish I was the worship leader because they get noticed more everyone knows their name or whatever it may be I wish I was the whatever athlete I wish I was we think we want recognition that's really what it is we want recognition yeah. from people but we don't know where they've walked to be where they're at and it's really a self a selfish sinful thing and us honestly like and even jealousy i think because we can't just like recognize a gift in someone else and be grateful for them and then say but god you made me for this so i'm going to use mine um but i mean I've been there too like it's, it's our heart motives with things because if we just want to do things to be famous and to be seen and recognized like that there's pride in that and he says in the scripture if you humble yourself then I'll lift you up so you have to walk in humility to truly be in one of those positions where God has you there mm-hmm. and you're in leadership and you're doing something he's called you to do and it not actually make you face plant. And it's not in your own strength. And just from hearing other preachers and teachers talk that have made it to those platforms, like I know Verdict says, you know, he's he's face planted a bunch of times. He's failed mm-hmm. a lot of times. He tried to do something. He's like, okay, mark that on my, on my nose. Don't try that. That don't work. And I feel like even like you talk about small beginnings for us, like, we both had our own walk before we met each other, and then we walked together. And people wouldn't believe what we just walked through just to get to where we're at. And honestly, some people probably can't see that. They're thinking, well, what have they really done? But, like, mm-hmm. we know how far we've come. Like, yeah. We see the difference in fruit. Like, And it's not just about what you're producing. It's about who you're becoming. So, like, some people might judge our success off of how many YouTube videos we have out there. Or how many likes and followers there is on there. But God's more concerned with like. Who are we becoming as we do that. And how are we glorifying him through that. Mm -hmm. And I think if that stays the motive and the focus. Like you can believe that God can do anything with something. Goodbye. I got a question for you. When you get off. You're just talking about all that stuff. What it takes and what you got to go through. Like I love basketball and football. Football is my passion, really, and I love playing basketball. I played basketball more because I was actually better at it. But I wasn't nearly good enough to make it to the college level because, quite frankly, I didn't put in what it took to make it to the college level. I keep blaming my height, but still. Mm -hmm. There's people my size that played college ball. Mm -hmm. But you, on the other hand, you played college sports. And how how did your life look? Was it an easy ride to get there? I devoted my whole childhood and up into being a young adult to get there. And then I got there, and I was broken when I got there, so it was never what I pictured it to be. Yeah. Because I was missing the point that it wasn't about arriving at a place. It was about what was going on in here. Because God can bring you anywhere. Mm-hmm. But if, if this heart is broken and it's not healed, and same with your mind, and your soul and it doesn't matter your circumstances we all know that like actually we can't say we all know that because I think we're still learning that the world is not the way sometimes like oh yeah that's not the way because we we see it so much Mm -hmm. we see it on social media we see it out when we go out and about and 
It's death. It is death, and God is life. Um, so there's been times where I thought that I had the very thing that was going to make me happy, whether it was, like you said, arriving to go play that sport at, in college or even having a certain body type when I was a size probably zero and way too small for my size and what some people would think is like picture perfect and having people tell me that man I wish I looked like you and I was never more broken sick or lost Mm -hmm. than I was at that point um but to everyone else to the (laughs) world that's that's success somehow Mm -hmm. um you know making a god out of your body and all the things that we can do put to put above him make god but um letting that go felt wrong because the world taught me it was right but letting it go is is the freedom um but it's definite it definitely brings insight when you hear a person's real story because from the outside looking in like our stories are different and you said you didn't go to college for sports and I did well some people would think well you know well Lindsay's more um I don't know blessed because she got to do that like she's had a better life because she got to do that not necessarily no and that's just like a very basic example you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. but some things it's it's not about the destination it's it's more about the The journey journey. (laughs) and (laughs) I have always gotten so aggravated when I feel like God is telling me that because sometimes I'm I still get stuck there I'm like when I get here you know, if more people were noticing our videos, yeah. I would be more motivated to do it. Just like I was just saying, you know, if we were recognized more for it, then blah, 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 blah. Even chasing after fame sometimes. Um, but you have to be working for God and knowing that it's pleasing Him, no matter yeah. who who's watching it. And, uh, we're going to bloom where we're planted. It bloom where you're planted. And... Uh, not the destination, but the journey. If my journey would have been God-focused back then, I would have a better story to tell about that journey going to play college sports. And so I almost envy, like, in a whatever way, like, I'm I'm happy for athletes that I see following Christ and going to play because I'm like, they're going to make an impact that lasts. Mm. And I do feel like, in a sense, I'm not saying it was all a waste, but when I look back, I would go back and do things totally different because if you're not doing it for the glory of God, then what are you really doing? You know? Yeah. Um, but I thankfully had teammates that were doing it for the glory of God that impacted and changed my life. So I found Christ really through meeting them. So I take that as a bonus. But anyway, that yeah. kind of got off into whatever. But I just wanted to cause we compare ourselves all the time, but without knowing what all goes on behind the scenes. And we're very different, too. We so, are. like, if we compare ourselves to each other, that could be a problem, too. And we're both artistic, but... In a different way. In a different way. Completely different way. Yeah. Because, Joey, you, you have great ideas. I feel like I'm the one that can make them come to life sometimes. Mm-hmm. But you have more patience, and I get frustrated about things, I think. <laughs> you think? Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of differences. It's a lot of differences. But we make a great team. Yeah. We do. <clears throat> and we're going to do great things. Yes. So where was I at? I was talking about comparison. You know, that's going to kill your faith. And, you know, you're important no matter what you're doing. Because there's a story in the Bible that all we know is a little boy. We don't know his family. We don't even know if he's supposed to be there. But he had five loaves of bread and two fish. And he fed over 5,000 people. Jesus blessed what he had. He used it. Jeremiah, Jeremiah was called to God, and Jeremiah said, "That God, look, I'm too young. Forget it. I'm too young. I can't do nothing. And God says, no, you go do what I tell you to do. You say what I tell you to say. You'll you'll rise up nations, and you'll trample on nations. You'll, you know, make them burn on the rubble or whatever that word is. <laughs> you'll knock them to the ground, wipe them out, because you're going to be the leader. And David... He was the youngest one of his family. Yeah. It says the scripture says don't despise your age. I don't know if that's where that is. But. Um, like don't say you're too young to do this. Don't. Or too into anything. Because I was just thinking. I'm just speaking from our life. I never thought. 
that at this point in my life that we would be renting a single wide trailer uh, with a daughter and embarking on this journey. Like that's never what I would have pictured. I can say that I am more fulfilled than I've ever been in a place that I never thought I could be fulfilled in. Yeah. Like, because my dream for when I was 28 years old was not, hmm, I hope we're renting a single wide in Carthage, Mississippi. Not that there's anything wrong with that, no. but it's just not what I pictured. And yet God has made dreams come true right here. Mm-hmm. And I And it's almost like I wouldn't want it any other way because the best place to be is right where he wants you to be. Yeah. Whether it makes sense in your mind or not, whether it's the ultimate picture of what you thought would make you happy, he really knows, it's like wild that he knows us so much better than we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, whoa, God, like, I really am so happy here. This is crazy. But it's all about, like, what are we doing with our life? Where where we're planted, what are we doing? And if we had a, a bigger house and we owned it and... What would we be doing? Because if we lost the direction we're headed in now, and, and God was not being glorified, and he was not the center, then we could be much more miserable in that place than we are here. Mm-hmm. But what would a lot of people think? Oh, they must be so much happier. They have they their own home, it and it's bigger, and they have <clears throat> two new Jeeps and a Bronco. Like, those are all things that I wish I... I, I would love to have a pink Bronco one day. I'm just saying. I want to have a Jeep again. I'm just saying. But guess what? I am thankful for the car that yes. I have right now that's paid off. That car. It was in the shop. It's in the it shop because we hit a deer. But you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking yeah. we got to be. It's just like, man, I remember. God's oh, providing. God's providing, and we can be so stingy sometimes. It's God. God is just freedom. And we talked about the journey that it takes to get places. And a lot of times, to even start the journey, you got to go through a process. Yes, that's and what the, I feel like where we've been. The, the last process year. really, really sucks. It sucks. Yes, I like. I feel like we've been married, and we're just now like, like tipping, dipping our toe in the water of what he's like really made us to do together because we were in a process. Yeah, like I can use your soccer for ex- we're still in example. Yeah. You got to go through a process of going through two a days practicing, dieting, running, conditioning. Before mm-hmm. you started doing elite travel ball. And what does everyone see? They see when they see, you sign. Yeah, when, when you sign. Oh, wow. She's, she's doing that. She's, yeah, yeah. she's just gifted. Yeah. I bet that's nice, you know. I don't have any ability to do And it's like, well, while no, you, you got were the partying. Ability, you didn't do what it took. Right. Like, well, while you were partying or while you were doing something else, I don't know. Spending time with me, like, like, you know, that person was practicing. That person mm-hmm. was doing something different. And he was waking up at 12, he was waking up at 5. Yeah, it takes sacrifice. Get their day started. Right, right. Yeah. So we can be, we can always envy what looks like success in other people's life, but we probably don't envy the process that God's had them going mm-hmm. through. And, no. you know, if we just knew sometimes how far God's brought people, because all people can see is where we're at currently. Like, Unless they see pictures or something, or they knew you in your past, but man, like we should be cheering each other on because exactly, it's it is much harder to allow God. I think I mean it's much more worth it, but it's it's easier to stay um, in sin, honestly, and to stay in what's comfortable to you than it is to really take responsibility and allow God to change your life. Like, it's mm. more worth it, but it's harder. It's harder. I think it is. Yeah. In the long run, like, it's, it's you're talking eternity. So, I don't know yeah. if that made sense what I was saying, but, um, yeah. Like, if, if it was, I feel <clears throat> like more people are not wanting to live for Christ because it's easier to run with the crowd. It's basically well, what I mean, I'm the Bible to say. says, you know, wide is the gate. Right, narrow is the way. Yeah, narrow is the way. I heard somebody say one time, Pastor Craig actually said it from his thing, because sin is fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it's not fun, you're not doing it right. Right. Because, you know, it is fun, it adds excitement and all that, but it's wrong and it'll, it'll hinder you from being who God called you to be. It's very temporary. And it's like the Bible says, 
sin gives birth to a child, and when that child's grown up, it's death. Mm-hmm. So it's basically sin is meant to kill you. Mm-hmm. And that's Satan's whole purpose for giving you that little excitement, giving you that rush. And you realize it hurts take you. you out. Yeah. It's kind of like, I don't know why I just thought of this example, but like, if you're invited to a party and you think it's fun because you're drinking that, you're drinking and you're having a good time, but you keep on drinking and then you do things you shouldn't do and then you wake up the next day and who knows what happened. Yeah. And you can finish that story. You could say a lot of things that happened from that. But when you first started and it was fun and everyone was there having a good time, it seemed like everything was fine. You didn't think anything bad was going to happen from that. So it's deceiving in that way. Yeah, so I kind of want to end it on this. You know, maybe you've struggled in the past knowing what your calling or your talents are. Mm -hmm. But there's some ways you can, you know, it says ask God to help you. The Bible says ask, and you know, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. Ask for wisdom. King Solomon if he asked for wisdom, that's what he prayed for was wisdom, and God gave it to him. Mm-hmm. Spend time with God. Seek God's face. Mm. God says in Jeremiah 29, 13, If you seek me, you will find me, and I'll be found by you. So God's not playing hide and seek with you so you'll never find him. He says, hey, all you got to do is say, Ray, you're not here, I come, and I'm going to stand out and say, hey, I'm right here. You know, God's like, I'm right here mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And And <clears throat> with his, like, specific calling and things that he has on our life i feel like we absolutely seek him for that but while we're seeking him for that and while we're understanding finding that out we know what the word says before he reveals anything else to us that we are the salt and light of the earth so we know that we're called to do that like sometimes it's like we all want to know this bigger calling Mm -hmm. and i completely believe in hoping and believing to know that and follow it and walk into it like yes but when you don't, like, don't live defeated and discouraged, because I've done that. Like, he still gives us direction in his word without having any other revelation from the Holy Spirit. Like, you are the salt and light of the world. And it's fruitful to be excited about that and believe that and know that a smile can change the world. Being mm-hmm. a kind person can change the world. Going to work or wherever you go today and, and just shining God's light and, I don't know, like, just being full of truth, all those things, not being selfish, like, changes your life. It does. Those little things. So now I just want to, if you're in any of those categories that I just talked about, you know, you don't know your calling or what your talents are, I gave you a list of things you can do, but if that's, no, continue. If that's you, I just wanted to say a prayer for you, like encouragement to help you. You can just pray with us, and trust me, you can have a hat on, hat off, do rag on, do rag off. It doesn't matter. God's so, here. God's pregnant. He's Bam. pregnant. God's pregnant, or he's present. Present. Did I say pregnant? That's what I heard. You're hearing You're things. Tired. Wait, but, wait. Before you pray, let me say one more thing. Okay. I just made me think of it. Remember when we were in the restaurant the other day, and it both made us so mad. And listen, like I've been this person before, um, without a doubt, I'm sure. Um, but. The girl, oh, the yeah. girl was the only one waiting tables. One and waitress in there. The whole store was packed, and she was the only one in there. And this other family sat down and was so mean to her because they had to wait for a second. And the other girl had just got called in, and they were really ugly to her. And she, she told the other girl like, "Here's your table," and so. So this one girl had like four tables, <laughs> and the girl that just started her shift, that was going to be her first table. Yeah. But so they were really ugly to that girl, and it was like so disturbing because I was like, "Have they not looked around?" So like we don't realize how selfish we can be sometimes, and we justify it. It's just like they didn't think anything else. They sat down, and it's like this is about me. Why aren't you serving me? Mm-hmm. It's like well, because she's got all these tables, and she's the only one working. Yeah. So I know, and I'm just thankful that God's like present in my life because I've been that person before. But that day. We got to be the person that encouraged her and mm-hmm. left her a note on the receipt and that make her smile. Tip. And that could have that could have just given her a good attitude for the rest of the day yeah. to say, you know what, like I'm not messing everything up. Like so yeah. Anyways. Anyway, so 
If that was you there, you're struggling for no cause calling in your life, his talents, we just want to pray with you. It's time to be serious. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so God, we just thank you for the people that are listening to you, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you just be with them, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you do show them the calling that they have on their life, Father God. You show them what their gifts and their talents are, Lord, so that they can use them for you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that they just Go for you wholeheartedly right now, Father God. You just you seek their heart, Father God, and they seek after you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just being with them and blessing them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And maybe you do know your talents for God, or you do know the talents that God has given you, and you just neglected it all together, or you, mm-hmm. don't, you don't know, you know, you just... Comfortable being lazy. Yeah, comfortable being lazy. You know, the Bible says to repent. When you repent and you start over, how do you repent? You just ask God to forgive you your sins. Tell him where you failed him and go from scratch. And maybe you neglected it all together. Uh, you give him everything you've got. You give him all your fears, all your failures, all your talents. And just run wholeheartedly after God. It's like I said, Stephen Furtick, we're reading a book by him. He's like, he's talking about fears and failures in it. He's like a lot of people, you know, they fear to fail and if you don't fail, you're not doing nothing for God. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not saying God's going to just leave you out there stranded, but God's going to be with you. But there's going to be times where you, you may even think you heard God completely. I've got a story on that. Three of them. I thought God really told me that. I was like, that's it, God. We're going. I know when God, it was Joey. <laughs> I've done that. That's all it was. It was Joey being Joey. He's like, hey, yeah, that's a great idea, Joey. That's Hey, I can find scripture to back me up there. What is it Medea said? You can find a scripture to say whatever you want to believe. Yeah. Anyway, y'all have a great day. Like, subscribe. God bless. Tune in next time.